everybody. Can you hear Chef AJ in the background? Because you can't see her. There's Bailey. Those of you who know, know Bailey is awesomeness. So today, welcome to the later edition of Plant-Based Chat, which is happening at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, or 2 p.m. Chef AJ time. Yay! <laughs> so as always, welcome. Um, Plant-Based Chat is where usually I bring on cool people that I know and like or want to know. And this one, I'm lucky that Chef AJ and I have known each other for a long time now. Um, and she's awesome, and she's a good doggy mommy, as you can see. And uh, I got to babysit Bailey a he while ago. Yeah. I know. <laughs> He's such a good dog. He's so fun. She does anything you want. I've never had a dog like that, but I would love to. It's like a stuffed animal with a heart. It's like, she does so great. That's awesome. Ooh. Apple fan, va, from Vancouver says, and Bailey too. Yeah. So she's super excited. So you guys, I know. I'm washing my hands because people complain even if it's my house if I touch <laughs> Bailey and don't wash my hands. <laughs> and Diane says she loves your dog, as do I. And I've gotten to cuddle him even. But yeah, it is true. People do tend to complain about touching dogs or cats and then cooking. And I also end up washing my hands. But here's the thing, Chef AJ. As you know, if you live with dogs or cats or pets of any kind, there is a payment. And that payment is eating some dog hairs sometimes. Everything tastes better with pet hair. Come on. <laughs> it's my secret spice ingredient. No, no. <laughs> They're protein. Hello. <laughs> For the very few of you who don't know who Chef AJ are, shame on you, but we're going to fix that today. Um, Chef AJ is obviously a chef. She's well known in the plant-based community. She, I believe you're the starter of the SOFA. So the SOS is no sugar, salt, and oil. So I, I, oh. the only reason I added FA, it's really, I didn't, I don't take credit for this. Dr. Alan Goldhammer, SOS free, sugar, oil, salt free. And by the way, I'm not perfect with the salt. Like, I use condiments with salt. I just don't cook with salt. That's all. Okay. And if there's a way to make the condiment without the salt, I will. But Dr. Goldhammer has always said SOS free for over 40 years, no sugar, oil, salt. And I was teaching that and eating that. And then the people if, that I was working with were eating like lots of flour and lots of alcohol. And I'm like, that's not on the plan. They go, well, it's not in the acronym. And I said this to Dr. Goldhammer. She goes, he goes, everybody should know that, you know, S for sugar means refined carbohydrate, flour and alcohol. I said, Dr. Goldhammer, Apparently people don't know. So I added the A, the F and the A for flour and alcohol for people that wanted to follow his health promoting program to know that it's true. And it's only, it's really only if you're a food addict. If you're not, knock yourself out. Eat whatever you want. I don't care. My and, husband needs flour, you know? And, and that's the thing too. So I, what's kind of funny is I, I go back to, I remember, and it was a long time ago. It might've been my first book when you asked me to be on your show. Um, a bazillion years ago and I was like oh she's super strict she's not gonna like me she's not gonna like my recipes I, you make everything for everyone that's what I loved about you right away is because when I saw your books and didn't know you you had like ways to make people feel comfortable like if they had allergies or stuff you weren't like one of these eye-rolling chefs you know <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because here's the thing, uh, and I know you and I feel the same way. If someone's going to sit at our table, they're going to eat. So therefore, anything can be made where it works with anyone. But I was just, and I, over the years, I've always just been re, like, invigorated by hanging out with you. Whenever I get to talk to you on the phone or we chat, it's just like you're such an uplifting individual. And I think Get sometimes, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my husband. <laughs> we just talked about this. Um, I think last weekend when I say everybody tells Cheryl, "Oh, you're so lucky to live with someone so nice," and she's like, "Really? Yeah, yeah exactly." And so, <laughs> I think there's always a little bit of that. But like, because I, I think because so many people came to you from this very restrictive diet, and often, I, thank you for giving me the history of it too, because often like I did, we associate you with the start of that, not Dr. Goldhammer. 
And no, so I think, and, and you know, the thing is, is like, you know, people take a snapshot out of a YouTuber your life and think that's all you are. Like I'm this really strict super. And the, the thing is, is if you knew me, you would see my life isn't restricted. But if you knew my history of somebody that it wasn't just that I was obese, I had the beginning of cancer. I wouldn't ever tell anybody to eat the way I eat unless they needed to for a really true medical or psychological reason. The one thing that I have said longer than anything, Kathy, that people seem to forget, like it's not what I'm known for, is do the least restrictive diet you can do that will get you the results you seek. So mm -hmm. if all the results you seek is just to be an ethical vegan, great, knock yourself out. I don't care if you eat Beyond Burgers and Oreos, I don't judge that. But when mm -hmm. people come to me struggling with food addiction and really like, I mean, you you may not see what I see with these people, how, how they, you know, at suicide attempts and how difficult their life is. So for people that I work with, they're like at the end stage. They're not like 20 year olds. This is what they have to do if they want to recover. But if you can do something more loosey goosey, do it. I would if I could, you know, and also also realize that I'm a lot older than a lot of y'all. I'm in my 60s and I ate like shit for 50 years. So it's not like I didn't, it's not like I was born like Dr. Goldhammer's son. I didn't start eating this way till 10 years ago. And believe me, you know, people don't realize I was Slurpees for breakfast till I was 43. So I get it. So yes, it does seem strict, but if you ever ate at my house and you see the food we're making, it doesn't taste strict. It sounds strict, but it doesn't taste strict because we are making smoky sweet potato burgers with barbecue sauce. We're making cherry cobbler. I mean, is that strict? I don't know. Maybe, maybe because I'm not using a bun, use a bun. I use lettuce as a bun. I like it. It's delicious. I cook for regular people. I test my recipes on regular people. I don't mm -hmm. test them on SOS free vegans. Believe me, because that not eat anything. That's just you say it's healthy. No, I test it on I mean, recipes are tested on regular eaters, not even vegans, by the way. Like, yeah. like, like most of my recipes, believe it or not, because most of my life I lived in an apartment building and we had a cleaning crew that would come every week to clean the building. I'm testing on that. They were as far from vegan as you could be. And I'd say if it passed the Maria test, if Maria liked it, then I figure it's going in the book. I, and see, I love this and I, I'm so glad that we're having like this casual chat in addition to getting to see all your goodies, of course. But um, to me, I have this reputation and it's like, I gotta break away from it because it's just it's just like a little segment of the population that I'm working with. I still teach cooking classes where we use all kinds of things like tofuti and chocolate chips and and you know date syrup. I just prefer you know the whole of the ingredients if possible. You know I'm not gonna probably use white sugar and white flour and oil because I mean I don't think it's necessary. I mean because I can make a German chocolate cake without it and I'll put it up against anybody else's. So but thank you for bringing up. Oh, no, 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 I love it. And I love that you're getting, because like when you're interviewing everyone, you don't really get the chance to like talk yeah. about yourself. And I really wanted you to have that opportunity. And also, just in case people didn't realize, 10th anniversary of Unprocessed. And this actually, this copy now has photos and stuff in here, right? I don't and think you it was. recipe in the book, too. You were so. Which one? Oh. Chef AJ, I think you've frozen a little bit, but I'm I'm like, I thought I had a recipe in the book, but I, I don't remember yeah, which so one. Like Kathy Hester sausage crumbles. Oh, it was the sausage crumbles. Okay, perfect. Oh, you know, you know what? what? I just flipped to it. Yeah. There's me. But like, I was like, the one I want to make really badly is that I can't believe it's not tuna pate. That was from culinary school. That 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 is such an interesting recipe because that was made up before people started using chickpeas and tuna. And it's it's got almonds and sunflower seeds, which is very interesting because no one would necessarily associate you with that because you typically. Right, I know. Because these recipes were created when I was in culinary school, we were using a lot of high fat plant stuff. But that's why with the tenth anniversary edition, I created lower fat versions. And so chickpeas, for example, if somebody didn't want to use the nuts and seeds, I'd say use the beans. Which is perfect. Um, and you are frozen, but I can hear Sorry. you, but the picture is frozen. Um, I don't know why I'm frozen, because I can see myself moving. Okay. I'll have no. Cheryl, like, Cheryl, will you take a look and turn off your sound? Yes. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna read this real quick. Sandra E says, I love you both because of Chef AJ's and her interviews with all the whole food plant-based doctors. I reversed my hypertension and I'm medication free. Thank you so very much. And I think that's so important to, to remember. And, and I love, again, what you were saying, Chef AJ, about how you, you are so accepting. And I felt that talking with you every single time we've ever connected. And also on the well, flip side of that, more accepting, huh? <laughs> accepting if you're vegan, though, and I'll be honest. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know sometimes I'm not as accepting as when they're not even vegan, you know what I mean? I try not to, but I'm like, I'm like, oh, really? You're still fishing? You call yourself a vegan and you still go fishing? I get that a lot. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah, I can totally... Well, that can be hard and so like even though I, in my group I have people who aren't necessarily vegan or plant-based because I want to make space for their exploration yeah, I'm not going to shame them but I'm just no. saying I'm, I'm not as accepting I mean I'm not unaccepting it's just I'm more accepting let's put it that way <laughs> that makes total sense to me so is there anything because I didn't say a whole lot except how we met and oh I did want to say the one thing like we had gone, actually, we can even just talk about in Las Vegas when I was doing your seminar and um, was amazing. And so like it opened my eyes that and there was another plant-based thing I went to that I got to see you and that I spoke at. And both times, yeah, remedy. The, yeah. the remedy, that's it, remedy. And having people come up to me and tell me that my recipes help them stay on a health journey that was important to them really nothing has touched me as much as that so i think that that's kind of like one side is yeah be do whatever you need to do for you and realize that there's some people that are struggling that need a different kind of help and if that's not you to just kind of go okay that's not me i'm going to get a different recipe or I'm going to saute with oil because I want to. And that's okay, too. I think you your and I have the same feeling. Your recipes are for everyone. Also, keep in mind, I'm very cheap. And when you stop using oil, you <laughs> save money. You have no idea how much money you'll save. It, it's moving now. I think it's just the internet connection. So, yeah, you're moving. You're a little fuzzy and stuff. But are you seeing her clearly on the other one? Okay, so I'm not going to worry about it. We're just going to go on. So Nancy Brown says, love you both. My husband each uh, lost 30 pounds over three years in our vegan SOS free journey with sincere thanks. And um, Lydia from Vancouver says, hello, and it's great to see us. And I like this one. Um, v Wagner says two very oh I thought it said very interesting cooks but it says very inspiring cooks. <laughs> My food is you don't want to hear that. How is this? Oh, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. <laughs> I, I think you, interesting. if you and I could have like a little TV show together, that would be very interesting. That would be fun. That would be big fun. Show. So you go ahead and introduce anything else. Tell us about any programs. We know that we should be ordering unprocessed, the new version. My book at the show right now. I mean, I do do uh, for people that are really interested in weight loss and uh, you know managing food addiction. I teach classes, but not all the time. The next one is August first with Dr. Goldhammer and Dr. Lyle. It's called the Thirty Day Reboot. It's a very very good class. It takes place over four or five Sundays. But I don't I don't do this regularly anymore because I'm busy trying to write my next book and my next one. I don't know how you've written like as many as you have. It takes me forever. And I do my daily YouTube show, which sometimes is five times a day because I don't like to turn people down when a publisher or, or a chef says, please, you know, and so, so really I, I kind of see myself as like the vegan Google or the vegan Don King right now, or at least for the last two and a half years, I want to promote everybody else's stuff because I want the world to go vegan so that Dr. John McDougall can be happy. I like that. And, yeah. And and I love the way you make such a supportive community too. Yeah. And you know, a lot of you guys were involved or I guess weren't involved, but you purchased the plant based bundle earlier this year and Chef AJ is the brain behind it, which was pretty awesome yeah. too. 
Could have done it without Lissa, but yes, it was my idea because there were a lot of wonderful bundles, but not for people that eat like me. And so mm -hmm. I would buy these bundles and they were beautiful, but it's like, I couldn't make any of the recipes. So I went to as many friends as I could. And, and it was, it really was something to be proud of. And I'm still cooking my way through that bundle. It's like amazing. So much good yeah. stuff. And I, I started this show because of interviewing the other plant-based chefs from the bundle, because I had so much fun and met so many nice people. I was like, I need to keep doing this. Yeah, the group, we had such a great group. They're all friends now. It's amazing, like, how they, we all met. I, that's what I do, is I bring people together. That's what Chef AJ does. I like that, and it's Bringing true. Bringing vegans together. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to be A new tagline. Ingredients together. Bringing ingredients and people Funny. together. It's completely frozen on everything. I forgot okay. my scallions. Luckily, I just remembered that I forgot them. I'll be right there. Okay, yeah. no so problem. Would you like me do you want me to start the first recipe? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and switch you to full screen. Um, okay. You guys can, if if you are seeing Chef AJ freeze up, will you just let me know in the chat, um, and I'll and we'll see if she needs to go off and come back in again. And Chef AJ, are you guys plugged into the router by any chance? Because that would help a little bit if you're not. Uh, no, because since too it, far. Since this is a one we well, really we're, we're, we're in a rental home. Yeah. We just moved uh, and we don't know if there is a router. We're using the lady's internet. We can internet. plug into, yeah. We, so we, she's in Europe right now. Can't really so ask we her. we can't yet. ask her. That's why you have to rent the house. Mm. Okay, because Ashley's saying it is still freezing and poor quality pixelated. I'm seeing the poor quality pixelating. It says it's freezing on or on and off. Mm. So let's just see, like right now it's just really, really yeah. fuzzy. <laughs> It's just the quality of the internet, I think. Um, we have a setup in our house. I did Zoom. You know, sometimes it just depends on the you, time. You know, I don't know where. It, it can depend on the time of day, because I've noticed sometimes if I go during the week at three or four my time, <clears throat> I guess kids are getting home or something, but the internet usage goes up, so sometimes mine goes down. But hopefully it'll pick up. Sorry. I mean, when I use Zoom, I don't. Okay, we're not on Zoom, right? So because no. Zoom doesn't ever seem to not work. But I don't know what to say. I'm really sorry. I don't know how to fix it though. It's okay. I'm gonna put no, you. No, There's nothing we can do, right? To full, and we'll just do the best we can because we can still hear Chef AJ and we can still kind of see what's going on. And if if you wanted to, I feel I bad though. It's pretty bad actually um, can we do it on zoom? can we go can we use my zoom and give people the link i mean my zoom always works i know that we won't have this problem on zoom i mean I, I, it's very unlikely yeah it's unlikely but if you're having this bad of a time could you try just going out and coming back in one more time and seeing if that helps yeah, yeah absolutely. yes Okay, I'm sorry. And okay, guys, we're going to just give it just a second. And then if not, we'll see. And we can always go over to Chef AJ's Zoom and let her um, finish that. And then I can put that up everywhere if we need to do that. Um, uh, and Gina's saying if she could speak more slowly, it wouldn't cut out so much. Hey, Chef AJ. Oh, that looks way better. Is it way better? Okay. And we did get a request for you to maybe speak a little more slowly because when it's doing the blur. Oh, sleek slowly. That's hard, but I will do my best. Well, why don't, since we have a good picture now, why don't I start with the first recipe? Perfect. I'm going to put it on you full. camera to get to this dish. Okay, thank you. Um, hello, I'm Chef AJ. Thank you, Kathy, for being here. Thanks that looks great. For watching. So you're not going to see me because you want to see the bowl right now. And what I'm going to be doing is making my favorite new recipe from the new book. And I say that because many of the recipes were the recipes in the original book, but we have 30 new recipes, and this is one of them. And this is my smoky sweet potato burger. This is called.
called a Pampered Chef microwave steamer. I love this. Cheryl tool. loves those, and I don't know why she has the little ones. And she every time we go to the thrift store, she gets another one. We have a collection, and I hate them because I hate storing them. But I, now that you've said this, I have to like it. I love it. And this is the small one too. This is the one quart. They come in two quart or three quart, and it's so easy because, like, if I want to eat vegetables when I'm traveling, even though I haven't traveled now in three years, there's always a microwave and even any kind of hotel or motel. But it's just the quickest way to cook vegetables, and I love that it has a strainer, so I don't have to, you know, get out this, uh, another strainer to make it dirty. And so I am laughing because Cheryl is like doing everything but making like rock out signs with her hands. She's got her tongue out going well actually i'll do this really quick she's like this she's like yeah it's a great tool it really is i used to be a long time ago a pampered chef consultant and uh i wasn't so great at selling but i was great at doing the demos and i just love their products and i still do so basically i just steamed it in the microwave but i steamed it a little longer than i would have if i was just eating it as broccoli there's some leaves i'm just throwing out so how really many minutes would that be Okay, this is a great question because in my, in my microwave in Indio, it was four, but here in Lincoln, it was eight. So it's going to depend on your microwave. You know what I mean? They're really not all the same, but it's anywhere between four and eight. But you can't really oversteam it for this recipe because you really want it to be really soft and mushy. You could even use frozen broccoli because then you wouldn't even have to cook it. So now I have smushed up my one pound of broccoli. I just try to find ways to get more green in recipes whenever I can. I did have to pre-cook the sweet potatoes, otherwise this would have been a very, very long show because they take about an hour and a half of good guys to cook. So these are the Hannah yams, which I'll eat as my lunch throughout the week, but these are the regular orange ones, hey Cheryl, that are right here. <laughs> Um, I don't, it's, it calls for four cups, but I hate measuring, so I'm just going to put the whole thing in, and, and then I'll adjust the recipe if I need more oats or rice to make them drier, because if I, if I measured four cups and there was a little left over, what the heck am I going to do with it, you know? I so, love that, and it's important for people to know, too, that way if they didn't have quite four cups, if it was three and a half, they can yeah. still make this. Of course. You know, the only time I think you want to be strict is when you're baking. Because you, you can't just make stuff up in a baking recipe. I mean, you can, but it's not going to turn out. So this is actually a potato masher that I found in the drawer here, and I'm mashing them. A little tip, when you're cooking sweet potatoes and you want the inside, please try to peel it or at least start to peel it while it's warm. If you wait until it's chilled, it, sometimes it sticks like a Band-Aid wood on a scab. So I find that if you get the skin off earlier, it's better. So I want to mush this all together. Oh, so what I like about these burgers is I love plant burgers in general, and I love to batch cook them because then on nights that maybe I have to teach a class, I can just take them out of the freezer and, and microwave them or put them in the air fryer and have a really delicious dinner. But many plant burgers, especially ones that I created in the past, have a lot of steps like sauteing the onion and garlic and you need to do the cooking. This is like from stuff that I always just have in the house and I can easily throw together. Also, I have a really hard time with legumes and beans, and most plant burgers are based on beans, which are healthy and wonderful, but I can't eat them. So it was so nice that I could finally find a hearty plant burger that didn't rely on beans. Now, if you've ever seen me cook before, one of the things I always teach is to measure your spices in advance. So I know I'm going to make this recipe a lot, just like I know I'm going to make my cauliflower bisque a lot. These are spice jars when the spices are empty. The labels wash off in the dishwasher, and then you fill it with the recipe. If you don't want to do that, you can buy them for 69 cents at Bed Bath & Beyond. I always smell it just to make sure I got the right thing, and then I'm going to put it in. <laughs> love that. Yeah, yeah it's just, it saves time. And now, and I love these burgers because they're so hearty because they're based on not just one starch, but three starches. They have sweet potatoes, they have rice, and they have oats. So Ooh. I cook in my rice cooker today a big batch of rice because tomorrow I know I'm going to be making tostadas for dinner and I needed to cook the rice anyway but most of the time I just buy the bags of organic frozen rice at either Sprouts, Rayleigh's or Costco and I microwave it for two minutes and then I have my two cups of rice and I use white rice so for people that think Chef AJ is so perfect well I'm not I mean Furman would be like turning over in his grave because I mean, he's not dead. I mean, that's a terrible analogy because he's alive. But what I'm saying is, <laughs>
what I mean is I, I, I eat white rice. I love it. It's my preferred rice. And then my oats. I mean, I'll eat brown rice and I also like it, but if you give me a choice, you know, so I'm not all that perfect, you know? I'm only strict in the areas that I struggle with. And well, so and now, I, perfection is, is something that's just unobtainable too. Exactly. Okay, I forgot to do this in advance. I have these cute little herb scissors or whatever, food scissors. It's a cup of scallions, the green part. And so I, I'm just gonna eyeball it. I love scallions. I cannot eat food without onion. I don't know how people, I feel so bad that like low FODMAP because I, I have to put onion on everything. I put it on salad. I, I just think onion or anything in the onion family is the greatest thing in the world. And uh, I don't know how people get flavor without onion, to be honest, it's gotta be really hard. So well, I'm just- Chef gonna AJ, say, um, yeah. two questions on this. One is Cheryl hates scallions. Oh, okay, then I leave them out. I would just leave them out. I would use some onion powder for her. I do have some people who have some onion allergies. Oh, man, that's tough. Like okay. onion and garlic. And do you, I recommend that they use a couple of pinches of hing or asafoetida. Yeah, I was going to say, the Hare Krishna spice. It's uh, yeah. called, or it's called uh, asafoetida. Yes, I learned about okay. that in the GI Health Summit from Chef Darshana Thacker. Yes, they can do that. But also, just so you know, there is onion powder in this already, too. So you ah. probably want to take that out. So She's it, fine with the flavor. It's just if there's a crunch. Like, that's why all my recipes are mince one onion. If I mince it fine, she'll eat it. Okay, so because it's getting so thick now, the batter, I'm going to put on some food service gloves. I just find with big things like this, it's just easier than using a spoon because I can really dig into it and, and mush them up really good. Now, I always, I personally think it's best to freeze it after you cook it. I've never tried freezing just the batter, so I, I can't attest to that. That's but how food. I do mine is the way you do it. I cook, I cook them and maybe just not all the, all the way to where they would be brown and freeze. But we do have a question from Liz who wants to know is, would this work with just rice and beans? She can't eat sweet potatoes because of their high potassium. Yeah. So I, I can't tell you hundred percent sure because I haven't tried it, but, um, I was gonna say I have a recipe with beans, but it also is sweet potatoes, so shoot. Um, the thing is, this, if you mush the beans probably, you know, really mush the beans so you get that texture, you know what I mean? Mush them up real good. I would Mushy. think it would work. What I would do is start with two or three cu cups of cooked beans instead of the four sweet potatoes, and then see if you could add that fourth cup of sweet potato or if you needed to add more oats or rice to firm it up. That would be mine. <laughs> You want to get it so that you can make, you know, a patty. And so what I'm going to do now is get my very well used. <laughs> love it. I love this. I can't find these anymore. They're from QVC, but they're fantastic because they have firm edges. And then what I'm going to do is now you can make these as small or as big as you want. So what I'm doing with my hand is I'm just kind of like kind of eyeballing it like in fourths. And this can make a lot of burgers, but I'd rather personally just make giant ones. Uh, you can make little meatballs and air fry them. I've done that. Ooh. But I'm, I'm gonna try to get eight even ones out of these. And so what I do is I kind of like roll them into balls first and then I kind of work with them. If I have to get two packs, I will. But I kind of just want to eat just one giant burger. <laughs> That's just me. I think I will use two sheets, you know? And I'll get one, I'll get that in a second. But the thing is, is these are not gonna be ready anyway, you know, for the duration of this uh, this chat. So, because they do take about 45 minutes to cook. And I just kind of, you know, play patty cake with them and just kind of make them as round and as perfect as you can. And then I can always also work it on the sheet. So I'm gonna do this on two sheets just because then I give them more space for flipping. Oh, this is so good. They look delicious. It's so yummy. And they're, they, you know, I don't know. I just love these. And wait till you see how easy this barbecue sauce is. And you know what? If one of them's bigger, I can either rob from Peter to pay Paul or uh, <laughs> I can make them. Per Listen, you can always use a measuring cup and make them perfect. I'm just not a perfect kind of chef that way. I just, you know. Okay, so there we go. But you can see how yummy. This. See, now you can see that this is way bigger. So I am going to take a little off because it's, you know, I want to have them more even because then they'll cook more evenly. 
and do and that. People, and then I have phone. Yeah. If people didn't want to wait 45 minutes, they could divide those in half and make smaller patties, and it wouldn't take quite 45 minutes to cook them. It wouldn't take, but, but it, I, I would say, though, Kathy, it still is going to need at least 30 minutes cooking on one side before you flip. It does seem to need that because of the batter. So these are, like, in my opinion, perfect. Yeah, this one's a little smaller, so I can still take a little, you know, if I want. And right. Apple says that she makes this recipe often, and sometimes she makes them in a silicone muffin tray. Well, yeah, that's a great idea. That's like, and then you can put the barbecue sauce on top when it bakes. That is a fantastic idea. And it would cook it, uh, easier, and maybe not faster, but easier, and then you can just pop them out. So there we have that. Okay. So I'm going to cook this. I'm not going to cook it now, because like I say, it's not going to be ready anyway. So I'm going to just put it over here. And show you how I make my barbecue sauce. So, I mean, I have nothing against bread. I just I just don't have any room for it in my refrigerator right now to buy it. Charles does eat bread, he eats uh, Ezekiel bread. But I like to serve these with, I, I look for like lettuce that's either, you know, that kind like the bib lettuce where you can put it in or really big leaves of romaine. And I just serve it the way you would any kind of burger, you know, with all the fixings. You know, there's pickles and ketchup and mustard and, uh, you know, whatever people normally would like to put on a burger. But, oh, mango salsa is one of my favorite things, believe it or not. And I had, I wanted to make that today. But then I thought, well, you know, that that's a good recipe. It's an easy recipe. But I want to show you something even easier because my favorite condiment has always been barbecue sauce. And I can make it. It's a lot of ingredients, but I'm going to show you a way to make them two ingredients. And one you probably already have on your shelf, tomato paste. I want to show you this very cool can opener. I don't get anything if you buy it, but it's from Tupperware. Other brands make it. What's kind of cool about this can opener is if you have pets or critters in your neighborhood that might lick the trash can, I worry about if they lick it, they cut their tongue. This can opener, it doesn't do that. And so that's why I've always used this ever since I was teaching the blind, because this is the can opener that they always used at the Braille Institute. And oh. it's very good for sighted people as well. I okay. love it. Me too. So I'm going to take my tomato paste and just put it in a dish. Tomato paste is such a rich flavor. And I think when you did the Iron Chef that time, Kathy, wasn't that one of the ingredients? You did an Iron Chef against Jill Dalton, remember? Yeah, I do. I think it may have been. I think tomato paste was one of the ingredients. And um, because we wanted to do things that people often had on their shelf. The tomato paste is one of them. Okay, so. You don't have to get this brand. Other brands make it. I just happen to like California Balsamic because he gives two free samples with code AJ. But I have seen other companies all across the United States, both in person and mail order, that makes a hickory balsamic. Ooh. Balsamic vinegar. And six mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just want to say, so it's CaliforniaBalsamic.com. And then yeah, when you have... Oh, no? And then when yeah, you have... Exactly right. Okay, and then when you go in there and buy something, make sure it's a coupon code you put in Chef AJ, correct? What it is, is like you pretend like you're buying it, like you actually have to buy it. And, and the checkout appears, there's something called order notes. You put Chef AJ and then you, he'll give you two free samples, small, 1.6 ounce, in the flavor of your choice, which helps you decide if you ever want to order again. You can try flavors without buying big bottles, unless, of course, you're able to go to one of his festivals, which he does have, and then you can see him in person. So okay. that's actually how I met him, believe it or not, was at the Harvest Festival, um, and he had all the flavors there so I could try them all. But Ooh, for barbecue, neat. this one is my favorite, smoked hickory. However, for people that like it spicy, like this is Dr. Greger's favorite, Blaze and Habanero. This will be Ooh. very spicy. What I'm going to do is use mostly this and maybe just a little splash of this. And so I don't measure it, but you kind of want, uh, if you could go in the camera, please. You, you know, can see an, it. An equal amount. And we're just stirring till it gets the right consistency. So, and uh, I mean, you know, it's just crazy. I never was a ketchup person. I'm becoming a mustard person now, but ketchup, I don't know what, I never really liked it that much. I always had barbecue sauce as my main condiment growing up. Like even when I had French fries, I always dipped them in barbecue sauce. So I'm just a barbecue sauce person. That's just who I am. 
And you know, when you buy it at the store, it's gonna have oil, sugar, and salt. It's this basically, the only sugar comes from the grapes. So I guess it does have carbohydrate. So it's still a little too thick for me. And you know, you can cut it with a cheaper vinegar if you want just to, you know, here. that's what I think I'm gonna do is just so I don't have to use the expensive one. I'm just gonna get, you know, a cheap vinegar. It doesn't matter, I can get apple cider or rice vinegar. It really doesn't matter, but I can just cut it a little bit, you know, just save a little bit of pennies that way. Um, still getting all the flavor, just to get it to the right consistency, which, you know, you want it thick, but not liquidy. I, I just know I do this all the time. Now, I don't always make a big pan like this because Charles doesn't like barbecue sauce. So if I'm making this for myself, I might just take two tablespoons of tomato paste oh. and just make enough for that evening, you know? Mm, smells really good. And I'm not gonna put a lot, but I am going to put, if it comes out just a little bit, come on out, of the hot one in there. Because I want it just a little bit hot, but I really want it smoky. And it looks just like barbecue sauce, doesn't it? And it's just perfect. So we'll have this for the burgers tonight, and it'll be fantastic. And, and this recipe's in the book, but it's so easy, you don't even need a recipe. Okay. Oh, I so love now. that. I And... One of the things I do if I like need a tablespoon or two of tomato paste is I'll just take a piece of foil or something and put tablespoons of the rest and put it in the freezer. So if you were just making, if I just wanted to make some for me, I could defrost one tablespoon and just hook it up. I love that. That's a good idea. So now I'm gonna make the dessert. And this is a recipe that I updated from the book just to be lower in fat but you can always make the higher fat version if you want to use the nuts. And this is the cherry cobbler. So there's three parts to this cobbler. There's the cobbler, there's the streusel topping, and then there's the whipped cream. And I'm gonna do the whipped cream first, because I only have a certain amount of plugs. And this isn't really whipped cream, but it's like whipped cream. So hopefully you can see this blender. You can. I, one of the things I love is as few ingredients as possible, because it just seems easier to measure and grab them all. So there's basically three ingredients in this whipped cream. The first one is pears. I like the jarred pears from Trader Joe's because I can reuse these jars. And I do because I make my own salad dressing uh, every week. And so I like to use these jars. But you can get the canned pears as well. And they will have, I like to get the brand that has either in it grape juice or in its own juice. And I'm gonna put the whole thing in the blender. <coughs> In the, in the original book, it had cashews, which are very high in fat. I'm substituting oats instead. And the only other ingredient is vanilla powder. Now, oats vanilla are powder, magic, aren't they? Oh yeah, absolutely. I've become a vanilla snob in my later years. Having been a pastry chef, having used alcohol-free vanilla, regular vanilla, and vanilla bean, vanilla water, and vanilla powder, vanilla bean powder, it's so much better. And I think anybody that had both in front of them would know how much better it is. It's expensive, but it lasts. And you know, you I, I mean, the book, the last one I got on Amazon for $38, I mean, I'm still using it. Cause you know, you use a teaspoon here and there. So we're just gonna blend this together. <laughs> Um, we have a question from Ronnie. He asked, can you use very ripe pears instead of canned? Um, yeah, so we've had to do that at Rancho La Puerta where I teach cooking. You're going to, of course, peel them, pour them. You might want to roast them. But if they're very, very ripe and soft and sweet, yes. So the thing is, is in order to make this without having to add any sugar or even dates, we need a, you know, canned and jarred pears are just always sweet. Sometimes you get a clunker with fresh fruit. And that happened at Rancho La Puerta, so we actually had to roast the pear to get that sweetness out. But yeah, there's no reason you can't. Just core it and peel it. So this is the topping. And if you really wanted it more thick for whatever reasons, you could add some white chia seeds to it. Not mm -hmm. black, black chia seeds will make this a very unflattering color. You would want to dilute this in either some water or the pear juice first. But I find since this is just a topping, this is thick enough. And this is also just good, like is a topping, like let's say you're having some berries or something. It's, uh, you know, it's just good. So it actually works well with this recipe and very easy to make. You could do it with peaches. I like pears better. It does work with peaches. And sorry, Ronnie, I, I, I'm so sorry about, it. I called you a, she, a he, but you were a she. 
So my apologies sincerely. What I do is I see a little picture and I see more than one person, but I can't even see from the faces who they are. So thanks for being so sweet about that. Well, you know what my, my grandfather said, you can call me anything, just don't call me late for dinner. So, oh. <laughs> Whenever you to... say that, I think about you and Johnny Carson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have said this with the burgers, but um, there is a big difference, and Kathy's probably taught you this, that smoked paprika and regular paprika are not the same spice. They don't taste the same. And for the sweet potato burger to be smoky, you would want to use the smoked paprika. It just, it is, it is different. Okay, so now we have the streusel topping for the cobbler. So in the original book, it called for dates, pecans, and coconut. And so we've done two changes to considerably lower the fat in this one for those for whom it's been important, maybe they're uh oh. I mean, not a lot. I have a bag here from Trader Joe's. Chef but AJ, you, we've, you've frozen up again. You want me to come in and out since we yeah, froze? Yeah, I'm so sorry to make you do that again. You guys were no we're going to do. No worries. You guys, it'll just be another second. She got on really quick last time, and as soon as she did, it got super clear. So I figured it's well worth trying again. And there she is. Yeah, I'll be right there. I'm just getting my hands a little bit. Okay. Can you see us? I yeah. Mean, can, you see, can you see me now? There yeah. Okay. It seems to be fixing it every time we do it. So that's not a problem. Now, oh, you would believe that I had such a hard time getting this lady on Zoom today. So I understand the frustration when technology goes crazy. But I just want to say the difference between these coconuts. So this is a reduced fat coconut. I get this at Sprouts. I see it at Whole Foods. I see it on Amazon. But to just give you an idea, the regular coconut has 21 grams of fat and 220 calories, but for the same serving size, 90 calories and seven grams. So for somebody for whom that's important, it could make a difference. Um, you know, so that's what we're going. We're going with the lower fat one because I actually am having a heart disease patient over for dinner and for him, this is going to be important. So um, it's the same principle is instead of using the nuts, we're going to add the oats and I've got my cinnamon in there already. You know what, I forgot my nutmeg. So let me go, if I can find it easily, I'll add it, if I can't, just Lydia's saying she was sad she missed the bundle. Will there be another one at one point? Okay, and I'll answer that one second as yeah. I close You take uh, all the time you need. We are here, excited, yes. waiting for Cherry so Cobbler. So here's the thing, I there is definitely going to be other bundles, and I, and I'm always in them, and they're not always mine. The thing is, the way bundles work, we're not allowed to tell you until bundle launches, because otherwise it does it's not fair to all the contributors. So follow me, follow Kathy, get on our mailing list, and the second a bundle happens, you're going to get an email. Yes. And so I don't mean to be so vague, but I got to be fair. But yes, there I already know there's more bundles happening because. They asked me for my material and I submitted it. <laughs> Yay. So, I don't mean to be vague, but it's like they do that to level the playing field because otherwise, but you know. You are crea also creating a bundle coming up in the future. Yeah, maybe, too. maybe I am. Maybe I am. And maybe I'm not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't twist your arm anymore. There will be bundles, yes, absolutely. But here's the thing. When I create a bundle, and I hope to do more, we're going to make it so that you, they can't, uh, material can't be repeated. There are other bundles that I, have, I am involved with throughout the year that let people repeat material. Yeah. But if it's a bundle that I'm the producer of, I can assure you, that it'll be all new material from that contributor. So they might have put it somewhere else, but anyway, enough about bundles. Time okay. to talk to your problem. So I have in my food processor, I couldn't find my uh, nuthead, so we're not putting it in. And I've got my, my um, whatchamacallit, my cinnamon and my coconut, and I'm just gonna, you know, make it zhuzh into a flour like a soup. Kathy, what food processor do you have? 
I hate them all, but I have the Cuisinart. I hate okay. it a little less of the KitchenAid. I, what I don't like about the new modern ones is they have all that junk up in the top lid so you don't spill anything out. And I'm like, I'm a grown up, but it takes like hours and sticks to clean them up. What about you? So, well, uh, right before I left the desert, my cuisine art broke. This is the late where I live. It's a small one. I just bought the bill, bullet and brought the Breville, the big one but I cannot figure out how to use it. So. I have heard, and, and I have more than a couple of people who love the Breville food processor, and I've been thinking about breaking down to get it. They say it's easier to clean. Yeah, talk to me offline about that, just because I don't want to waste your viewers' time. About, but the, please, because before you buy, no, I mean, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good yeah. thing. That, that it would, yeah, I think it's going to be amazing. I just, it's so overwhelming with all the parts. It's like, did I buy an automobile? I don't know. And you know? I'm like, you, whenever you get something like that, you need to have them send it to me and I'll make you a video. Cause I'm the one who's always figuring out the weird, crazy appliances. For did you ever figure out that cooking pal? Yes, I did like a whole twice, bunch of, huh? Twice now I have sent things to Kathy as a, as a quote <laughs> on, in air quotes, an influencer that I couldn't figure it out. And I sent it to Kathy cause she's like a, she's a magician. And, and she's an electrician and other things like that. So now my dates are going in here. And by the way, you know, I like recipes that can be used for more than one thing. And so, like I mentioned, the pear whipped cream can be used for other things. This streusel topping is also great on banana ice cream, on fruit. Mm. So now I'm not trying to make a lara bar. I'm not trying to like keep it running and keep it running. I'm trying to get a crumbly texture. <laughs> And Chef AJ, I muted you for just a second while that's running. And Deb P says Dylan has one and maybe he can help you out. And I'm going to unmute you now. Yeah, but Dylan also just had a baby. But, you know, who else has one? Sharon McCray. Someone will teach me. I'm going to have to run this again because these dates are a little bit tough. So just give me another moment. You've talked before about saving money. And so I don't always buy Medjool dates. So I end up soaking those cheaper dates overnight so if you guys are on the bargain date shopping that might be something you have to do as well and uh, ronnie she says the breville is totally easier to clean and she highly recommends it nice nice oh that looks good so i don't know why this is maybe maybe this blade needs to be sharpened oh you know i know what happened and it's my own fault for not squeezing my dates I had a pit in there and that's why it, it all, you know, slowed down. So give me one more time. Okay. And it'll be fine. And I will just, yeah, there, even when it says they're unpitted dates, a lot of times there's still pits or slightly parts of pits in there. So it's always good to go ahead and break them open before you do stuff. Okay, Chef AJ, you're unmuted now, and okay, so now we have the right texture. So, guys, the reason it took so long and because why the blade got wonky is because there was a pit and I didn't know it. So now I have the texture I want. If I were to keep going with this, it would make like a like a bar or a brownie-like consistency. And so this is not. I want it to be like streusel, like that you know that you see on mm -hmm. cake. So this is probably going to have made more than I need for this recipe, but that's okay. I'll just keep it in the refrigerator or the freezer till next time. But you see, I kind of want to sprinkle is what I want. And this is just yummy. It's just date, oat, and cinnamon, and not like if I had it. And if you use the pecan instead of the oat, it's basically the same thing. It's just going to be a little richer. So now, not, not a little richer, a little richer. Now, if, <laughs> time, if there's time, I can show you something else that has nothing to do with this recipe just because I need to make it today. But my husband eats peanut butter every day for lunch, and I got tired of all the plastic in the jars. So I got the Nutrimilk machine, and it makes it in one minute. It's pretty darn cool. If you want, I can show you that. But first, of feature. course we want you to show us that. Because actually, I asked you about that because I was, and I'm still using some of the Joy, J, I believe it's called Joy, J-O-I. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the con plant milk concentrates, which in other words are really finely ground nut butters. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing though how they're shelf stable to me. Aren't they shelf stable? I think that's so weird how they were able to do that. Yeah, I haven't had anything, like I've gotten all, they have, what's kind of interesting is the oat one is SOS friendly. Mm -hmm. um, and it just has 
organic oats in it. The, I think the creamer one is the only one that has salt. They're all right. unsweetened. And so the creamer one, I do have to say, is pretty magical and it foams up and you can make vegan cold cream with it. Whoa. Yeah, Cause I've done that in my Vitamix air and with one of those little um, frothing wands. So it works. And actually even the oat milk will froth up from it too. Yeah, you know, I didn't realize you could even froth oat milk. Uh, sorry, I'm over here. I'm just trying to drain these frozen cherries. That's okay. We I can still see a little bit. The frother works on almond milk, even boxed almond milk. It's incredible. It, it is. Like you're going to, and I did a demo of some of that. So, like, people will recommend the barista ones, which in general have oil in them, and you will get a finer froth. However, all these other plain milks will froth beautifully and you can still enjoy them if you want to do it without any added oil. So if, if, the, if the house I'm renting, this was just on the counter and it, and it looked on Amazon, it was like 14 bucks and it works really good. That's, I have one that looks just like that. It, I think it's a different brand, but I think they're all made by the same person in China, but. <laughs> okay. So now, not for the cherry cobbler part, so we need, well, I mean, I guess you could use frozen cherries, but I got to tell you, when you're using three pounds of cherries, if you're using fresh, you're going to be doing a lot of pitting, and they're not always in season, or at least where I live at, at the Rayleigh's and at Trader Joe's, you can get frozen cherries all year round. So Three pounds, so that's a that's a lot to be pitting. It's a lot. So so I, I defrosted them, and I drained the liquid as best I could. The Rayleigh's brand seems to have more cherry juice than the Trader Joe's brand, so I might have to take a little out, but this is gonna be the base. So this is like the, almost all the three pounds of cherries. So we're gonna put that aside, but what I did is I took about a fourth of the cherries away in a different bowl. Oh, sorry, I'm getting your mouse pad wet. And um, these are actually gonna be blended. So. Like I said, this is more cherry juice than I've ever seen come out of the Trader Joe's one. And I've used it to soak my dates, but I think it's too much. So I'm going to take some of it out because I just think it's too much. Because really what I wanted to do was just soften my dates so I could make a date paste. Um. And I'm making a cherry date paste. So I'm going to put this in the food processor. And, you know, you can always add some liquid if you want. And I'm going to make quote, date paste, but it's cherry date paste. Because That's cherry so paste. smart. You can yeah, make like pineapple date paste too. Like if you cut up a... I've made every flavor fruit paste. So this... Oh yeah, this has to be close. They're oh. always so tricky, aren't they? And when you get a one you're not used to, I'm always confused. You have to do it the way it wants. So now I'm going to pulse or pure... I mean, pure <laughs> someone says yummy i love cherries who's watching over from facebook excellent all right so i've got my date paste but it's really a cherry date paste and what i'm going to do is i'm going to add just some of the cherries most of them are set behind right they're for the the dish but we want to have like the, the people who just got this beautiful white towel. Dirty, but I guess that's what <laughs> Cherry juice is dangerous like beet juice. Oh, I know. It's not my towel. <laughs> now, if this goes in the fridge, it's going to set up, but I don't have time to chill it now and also plate it to show you. So what I like to do is just put a little bit of chia seeds in. Nice. Where did it go? Oh, here we go. Um, the only reason I'm using white chia seeds is because I ran out of black, but they both work fine, and they're the same nutrition profile as far as I know. And Diane is saying that the color of the cherries match your shirt. Ah, yes. Well, it's a beautiful color. All right. Um, it's, it calls for a lemon and the zest, I didn't have it. And again, don't ever feel like you have to use something you don't have. And that, that's not to be funny. It's like, unless it's an integral ingredient, you know, you just go with it. So now I am going to pour this over the cherries. And again, the chia seeds don't thicken in a moment. It, you know, they have to take a little bit of time in their fridge if you've ever made chia pudding, but these will thicken. 
And so we go like this. Now I'm going to, like you said, I'm going to make individual ones. And often what I do is I use these kind of glasses. I will use a very, very pretty parfait glass or a milkshake. Ooh. However, I figured since I'm going to all the trouble to make so much food, I may as well invite people over to eat it. And there's so many vegans in the Sacramento area that want to come here for dinner and they're coming here tonight. So I know that there's eight of them. So what I did is I just bought eight cups so that they'll all get an equal amount. And so I'm not going to do all eight. I'm just going to plate one and then basically you would repeat the process. I'm so, so jealous of them. I have to say, because that I, I'm looking at what would be delicious for my dinner. Yeah, <laughs> It's going to be a good dinner. So we take the cup. And you know what? You know what I should do just to make sure that they're all the same. I said I wasn't going to do all of them, but if I don't, what if I put too much in wine? Somebody <laughs> gets more than somebody else. So I'm going to put these out. At least do I'm going to at least do the first layer. Uh, am I missing the cup? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. I love parfaits. Oh, you know I have a trifle bowl over there. And trifle is so cool. Because, trifle bowl is so cool because if you didn't want to go to all the trouble of plating, you could just make one giant one, and then I everybody. I love that. It. Yeah, so that's the way if you're, you know, if, if you're doing it for too many people, so. And you know so what? at the bottom, you're putting the filling, or the. Like, I'm or the make it in case Charles wants to eat one now, and he doesn't have to tell the other people. If there was a ninth one. I think that's fair. He's working hard. Right. He has to do all the behind the scenes. And if he didn't want to eat it now, he could eat it tomorrow. And oh. I hate to tell you this, but you just froze again. I'll give it a second, but you may yeah. have to go out and come back in one more time. Yep. She's coming back in, guys. I know it seems like this is a lot, but it's better that we get to see her because she's so entertaining. And there we are, and we can see you. Okay. So um, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting the bottom layer of cherry. Uh, you know what? I'm going to make 10 because then we have two extra. And guess what? Then I get dessert two days in a row. So we're not going to tell the people that we took from their dessert. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Eight, nine. That's what we do. All right. So we got mostly our cherries on the bottom. And then we're going to do the streusel topping. Okay. Hold on. So I don't know if these are perfect, but, you know, they're close. They look pretty good Perfect is entirely overrated, too. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know what, if you want perfect, like I have a friend who's a Virgo and everything has to be perfect. If you want it perfect, and if I was working in a restaurant, of course, and people were paying, but this is free, you just do a measuring cup and you put the exact same amount in each one and voila, and it's perfect. I use like those big cookie scoops. I have a bunch of different size cookie scoops and I even make my burgers that way a lot of the time so I don't have to figure out what's what. And that's perfect. So now we're going to do streusel. And we're gonna we're gonna do another cherry layer too, not a big cherry layer, you know. But it's so fun when you do it in a milkshake glass and give it with a big straw, and then they can dig down and they get like multiple layers of every flavor. I have a parfait sort of like this that I do at the holidays with a sweet potato or a pumpkin mousse and uh, and um, and a cranberry relish, and it's just I love parfaits. I love things that have multi layers and different textures. So we're just going to put that on top. Ooh, it got hot in here. Can we open a door or anything? But mm -hmm. it's okay, the front door. It's because I'm using a big light. So there we go. All right, so now, and of course, you know, chill these before. Now, you can, um, you could warm these in a dehydrator if you have it. I prefer this, I prefer it cold. So then I'm just going to put more cherry on top, every layer. Oh, this is so good. I'm not kidding. It's probably going to be really sweet because I didn't have the lemon, but, you know, I guess isn't that the point of a dessert, right? To be sweet. Yeah. Lemon, yeah. lemon zest is also, is, is very nice in things. 
Well, in one of my last classes, I did a dehydrator class making powders. So like we made vegetable bouillon powder, but we also made lemon powder, lime powder, and orange powder so that you could just pop some in. Yeah, that's a great idea because they sell those powders often like in places like Penzi's. They're way cheaper if you make it with a $5 dehydrator you got at the thrift store. Oh my God. <laughs> So I'm starting to run a little bit low on the cherry, but I'll make it work because I really intended eight. I just want to get a little bit on each one. As well, those, eight, those eight are for them, you guys, right? So, so let me just, uh, yeah, they won't know. Get every little bit. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, the two extra won't have quite as much cherry. There we go. What a mess I've made. And now, more streusel topping. Oh, that looks great. Fun. It's so fun. So fun. I'm doing a class for Dr. Rosan Alviera next week, and I'm making the cobbler. So now I have some, now I learned a little bit about not making such a mess next time. <laughs> so I'm just, and again, I could save this, but I'll just give it to us. Oh, one thing I didn't do, which is kind of fun, is to withhold one cherry for every single one so that you have like a cherry on the top of each one. That's another plain thing. And now with whipped cream on top. Oh, that's awesome. It's so thick. It doesn't really need the chia seeds. It's already so thick. And if I have it in the pantry, I, oh, you know, I could dust it with a little cinnamon or if I had like a pretty like lemon peel garnish. The other thing I could do is, um, what's it called? Oh, I have these things called potato of love from Penzi's. It's these very small dehydrated purple sweet potatoes. And they, it's almost like the equivalent of using sprinkles. That I sometimes I've never think. seen those. You're going to have to send me that. Well, I'll see if I still have it in the cabinet real quick. You know what? Well, the, okay. peanut butter, the peanut butter is going to take two minutes. And while it's zwizzing around, I'll look in the pantry to see if I still have it. So there we have it. Oh, it's so thick. It because looks oats, amazing. It tastes pretty good. I mean, I haven't had complaints. I don't get complaints on my desserts because I was a restaurant pastry chef. And, you know, sugar is not necessary to make desserts if you have dates or fruit. I mean, there's nothing about sugar that's all that special that you can't find in, in fruit. So there we got it. You know, if, if, if I wasn't live, I would take more time, make it perfect. But the people that are coming, they're in their 80s. They won't notice. No, I'm just kidding. They're not <laughs> Hopefully they're not watching this. Okay, so there we go. All right, so now, phew, while we um, look for our potato of Penzi Love, I want to show you this Nutri Milk machine. And let me talk to you before you buy it, Kathy, and I'll tell you everything I know about it. Okay. Um, yeah, we can talk offline, text or phone whenever you like. So this right here is a different base than the one you might have seen before that has the spigot. And that's because I'm using the smoothie bowl because I'm not making nut milk right now. I'm making nut butter. But it's basically the same process because all nut milk is nut butter to which you've added a liquid like water. So um, this ends up, because Charles eats so much peanut butter, it ends up being cheaper in the long run because, you know, a, a good organic peanut butter is, is not cheap compared. I'm not talking skippies here. And it takes such a little time to make. And Charles, do you think the homemade tastes better than the jar? Yes. He says it tastes better. That's really what it's about is taste. So, yeah, you can see it's good. Yeah, so you can I, see. And I almond get, butter and things like that. Almond butter is crazy expensive. Oh, yeah. Almond and cashew butter, macadamia nut butter, it's like $25 a jar. Also, I use this. I've been eating a ranch dressing that I like lately, and um, it calls for tahini. And, and I, all you have to do is put sesame seeds in here, and it makes tahini. Sharon McRae taught me that. So, so it's again, if you're only going to use the tiniest amount of nut butter or nut milk, it's probably not worth it. But if you use a lot like we do, it might be. And I have a $50 discount code from the company. I use the roasted peanuts, but unsalted peanuts. But if you like salt, you could use it. And I do two bags at once. These are, oh, these are 12 ounce bags. They used to be a pound. <laughs> 
They usually come in a pound. I, you know what? I never bought them at Sprouts before. Uh, I because, think it's uh, called the, the recession or whatever, inflation. I, I can only go to Trader Joe's about once a week because it's kind of far, but Sprouts is near. But it'll work fine. It doesn't matter. You can put as little or as much as you like. But I love it that you don't have to do anything other than push a button. And while this is blending, for t it's going to take really one minute is enough. But I do for two minutes, make it a little bit creamier for him. I'm going to go look for the potato of love. And so there's some buttons here. Do you want to show them the buttons? If you could um, go. There's, uh, yeah, I can, you can see them now. Butter, mix, dispense, start. It's just the butter button. But 16 is way too long. We're going to go for two minutes. And then I'm going to look for something and I'll be back. Okay. And I'm going to mute for a minute and I will just go back to this, even though we're not, we're not seeing the nut. Is it the Nutra Mill or the Nutter Mill? I get confused. Ooh, look at that peanut butter. You can, we can see it good now. It's already starting to look like peanut butter. And I'm sure Chef AJ is going to come and tell us some more stuff about that. And um, to go back to Apple was like back with the parfaits. They look amazing. And um, when Chef AJ was talking about the people coming over when they're 80s, they won't care. JM says, I'm in my 40s and I don't care either. And I kind of say if somebody's coming to your house and they don't like what you're giving them, they can go eat somewhere else. They should be nice. Okay, so I've got the, I've got you off mute. I think it's, oh, um, here, let me put you on full. Oh, potato of love. It really is. Can you show the very bottom of it? Like, can we see? Um, <laughs> I think up, up to the, yes. Okay, cool. Are they just, um, I'm not sure why I'm not, can, there we go. That's awesome. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to find that. Is it just sweet potatoes in it? Is that the only ingredient? So they're just chopped up small dehydrated sweet potato, purple sweet potatoes. Oh my gosh, those are so pretty. Oh, could it end it? So these are these are so pretty, and I got these at Penzi's. Actually, when I got them, it was like free with purchase, and it was so funny because it was the night Dr. John McDougall came for dinner, and everybody got one with a party favor because we kept buying something just to get our free power of love. And uh, <laughs> this, this is this is it for this. But isn't it kind of cute? It's it's gorgeous. Yeah, and it's just it's just dehydrated sweet potatoes, and um, they're the purple ones. So it's like because you know instead of using sprinkles, I think it's kind of fun. There we go. Look at that. I'll just use all of it, and I'll get some more. Well, I mean, and I'm everything, gonna... everything tastes better in purple. Well, yeah. Why do you think but I you... keep dyeing my hair purple? <laughs> right. Did you still, um, I don't, like literally two minutes, and my peanut butter's done. I'll just show you what it looks like. And then it'll stay in the fridge for a really long time. And I mean, it's so, e it's so easy. It's like ridiculous. And that's that. So now if people, it, how do you say it again? It's the, is it Nutramilk? Not, they call it Nutramilk. It should be Nutra, but Nutramilk. Okay. Nutra. So I have lots of videos on my YouTube. It makes ice cream. It makes smoothies. It makes milk. It makes nut butters. It can be used in place of a food processor if you want, but really where I think it shines is for people that do, especially like, like Sharon McRae, who has kids, they go through a lot of nut butter and almond butter and cashew butter. And like she said, it paid for itself in just a few months because they were buying organic jarred, you know, like you say, almond butter, twenty seven ninety nine. I mean, come mm -hmm. on. Well, maybe, you know, but, and tahini too can be expensive if it's, if it's a raw tahini, but it's very easy to make things yourself. And, uh, yeah, we're giving away one free very soon on the show. It was for the 1,000th episode with Rich Roll. People sent in a video, and somebody's going to win one. I won't know who until Monday because we have to go through all the entries. But. Oh, that's awesome. And Gina says she loves her Nutramilk machine. Yeah. And so if, 
If I want to buy one, I can go to chefaj.com and I'll see. You know, I have to, I'll give you the link. I, you know, I, I have all these links and codes, but I don't have uh, my website. Yes, chefaj.com. Go to products page, right, Charles? Yes. It's there. Sorry okay. about that. And if you email me the stuff, I'll actually put it up on the YouTube video yeah, too. Well, so if people want to check that out for the vinegar, for that, I'll, I'll find the code for potato or blah. And not a code, but I'll, I'll find the product. Okay, that sounds awesome. I'm putting us both up here again together. And it, it was just like, you've done so much. And what I want everyone to realize is you made sweet potato burgers, a multi kind of recipe dessert, a barbecue sauce and peanut butter in like an hour. Right. And it probably would have gone faster if I was in my own kitchen. I'm not, this, I'm, this is not my kitchen. And like, I don't know where anything is. And I don't have my space, but yeah, I think you could do it fast, especially with the ingredients I chose, you know, I mean, you have to have the, the sweet potatoes cooked. Honestly, that would be, but you know what? Um, Trader Joe's and Sprouts sell sweet potatoes like frozen. I have used the frozen defrosted ones I have in a pinch. Ooh. So I, you know, I, I prefer to roast them myself to get that really uh, delicious quality. But again, rice, you know, I made rice because I needed it, but usually I just use the frozen to be honest. I love, I, I just love how everything's really simple, really flavorful, really delicious. The only thing I don't like is that I'm not coming there for dinner. Well, you gotta move. Why is everybody in North Carolina? You and Howard and uh, uh, um, Jill, Jill and Kim. No. There's a, why y'all there, you know? We're waiting for you. That's what we're doing here. Well, but you got alligators, don't you? We don't have alligators in North Carolina. No, <laughs> no. Not, not here. Maybe in <laughs> South Carolina. <laughs> I, don't know, the, <laughs> I don't know geography. I'm like, okay. I'm I horrible mean, I, with it too, but no, I, I, Cheryl's saying there might be some on the coast of North Carolina. I think once you get in the swampy areas of South Carolina, there are. Um, That's where I saw the alligator. Then I saw one in Florida, and I saw one in South Carolina. I got a little dog Bailey. You know that's why I'm afraid of alligators because they do eat little dogs. They will. Now we do have foxes and coyotes, but you might as well. Yeah, we have coyotes. One thing we don't have here, thank goodness, anymore is scorpions. Those were freaking me out in the desert. But we have Canadian geese. And let me tell you, I'm a vegan, but I don't like them. I was attacked by one. Bailey was attacked by one. They are nasty animals. They're very territorial. And actually, we took some pictures this morning on our walk because the last time we saw the geese cross in this one place, they were like just like popped out of the egg, getting ready for water kind of baby geese. And now they were like teenage baby geese. But like scorpions i i only lived in like a desert climate for like a year i was in like phoenix and scottsdale arizona for like maybe a little over a year and i'm not cut out for the desert it's beautiful i appreciate y'all that love it but i need some rain like see it's been sunny and now it's cloudy and it'll probably rain and then all my little plants will be happy and it's in phoenix so it would act like it was going to rain and not and i would start crying well, you had three years in the desert, three days of rain. You got one day a year for like an hour. That's why nothing's green in the desert. And that's why where I live now in Lincoln, everything is green. Now, when do you move into your house? Well, we don't know because we'll be thinking of getting one that hasn't been built. So maybe not until the fall. Okay. Well, we'll all be thinking and having our fingers crossed that you get just what you want. Oh, and Lydia mm -hmm. says the geese are back in Canada now. Laugh out. No, not, not where I am. We've got all those geese here. There's one that honks every night here that drives me crazy. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Cheryl sang. Cheryl has this um, um, story like when she was in diapers that her mom they were out somewhere and her mom was like don't play with the geese so she like ran over to the geese and then it like snapped her and like got her diaper off and bit her on the butt yeah. they're, they're, i know they're god's creatures but man they can be really difficult to cohabitate with there there's always some things that are harder than others like i can live with a couple of spiders you know as long as they keep staying in their space and i'm in mine but like if one like my I don't like it when they're somehow getting my car. And then if you've ever had a, a spider come down and I'm like, you're gonna kill us all. So stop oh. that. 
You wouldn't have liked the desert. We had something called the wolf spider and they carry a hundred babies on their back and they freaked me out. That was one of the reasons I had to move because two got in the house and they're not actually dangerous compared to black widows, but they're big and they're thick and they're creepy. And I just couldn't get over having two in my house at two different times. I, I, I literally flipped out. Like the neighbors were like, who's being killed here? Like nobody, please. And, and Charles has a bugzooka so he can humanely relocate them. I, but I, tell you, I don't do well with scorpions, spiders, and snakes, and apparently Canadian geese. So well, <laughs> I wouldn't have made it as a, as a you know, a frontiers woman. I can tell you that. It would have been like dead. Well, it's a good thing that we're not in the frontier because it would be a lot harder to get oats and frozen cherries and all the and things we like. yeast and <laughs> top power of the potato. We probably could have had a lot of potatoes. I, I think that would be, but yeah, I think it would, it would make me a little sad to try and frontier cook. <laughs> but thank you so much for A, just being my friend and being on here and just being your wonderful self and really bringing all this easy food to the masses. I think it's so important and I, I'm really glad that everyone gets to see that Chef AJ is just a nice, wonderful person. Just a regular person who eats a lot of potatoes. <laughs> Most regular people should eat lots of potatoes. Like to me, I don't understand why you would say no to a white potato or a sweet potato. All potatoes are always a yes for me. White rice, I know. You know, I have to say, like for I like brown rice too, but there's sometimes like whenever I'm feeling a little like if I'm not feeling quite well, is the best remedy for a tummy it, ache. Oh, it's easier on your stomach. That's what Dr. Goldhammer said because the fiber's been removed, and whenever my tummy is upset, that's all I want is white rice. And I don't know where this came from. I think it's when I was a poor college student, but like there's something about rice with just a tiny bit of salt on it. Scallion. I put a little scallion. In. That'd be really good too. And you know, I've been making this weird, easy, plain sub salt substitute. Like lately, it's one tablespoon of onion powder, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of ground celery seed mixed together, and then put in your salt. That delicious. Yeah. That sounds delicious. So I guess I, I'll spill the beans. I shouldn't. Um, so I, I live now near Nick, who's from local spicery. He's the guy that makes the pepperoni spice already made up. You know, you have a great recipe, but when you don't want to make it up, sometimes you buy it. And he came over for dinner a few weeks ago with this new seasoning. It's a salt-free seasoning, but it actually tastes salty. And he's going to unveil it on my show on the 18th of June at 2 p.m. That's a Saturday, the day before Father's Day, because it... it when you hear the ingredients, you're going to be like, you could probably re reverse engineer it. You know, they're whole food ingredients, but um, it's really, really good. It'll be very interesting to see too. Yeah, because there's like, I have some different salt-free blends, but like, I like this one for when people just kind of go, I'm telling them how to put a lot of things together and you don't want to put, you know, Sally's salt blend with all the things, you know, because there's a bunch of different flavors. Right. That's the, that's the problem because some salt free in, uh, spice uh, seasonings are very good, but not with everything, right? Like, I know what you mean. So, anyway, and you know, there's always the green salt. Um, I don't eat it, but uh, let me show this to you. I haven't had it yet, and I oh. really want to try it. I'll get you a sample, but you follow up on email. The, the problem with texting, because since you're my friend, you usually text. But the problem with text is I forget. But with the email, like, then I send it off to Chris and I'll say, with the, you know, but um, it tastes just like salt and it's green. And so when you talk about it on rice, it actually is very pretty on rice. I like that. I like and it. It's 75% less sodium, but it's totally salt. It's just made of a sea vegetable called sea asparagus. Okay. Well, I'm in. I know that you've got to finish getting ready for your dinner party because yeah. I didn't realize you were having a dinner party. But okay, thank you. Know, I just have to cook the burgers. I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Like, if everything's made. This is what I do. And like when Dr. McDougal hires me to teach, I always ask him for the Saturday slot. So I can have the dinner party right after. <laughs> Very clever. <laughs> Very clever. Well, hopefully you'll have time in your busy schedule to come visit with us again because you are always welcome. Well, it is my pleasure. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I appreciate it. And um, th there's a link to get this book, and you really should get this book. And also, 
follow Chef AJ. And I want to say one thing. I know not everybody can watch all 1,000 episodes of Chef AJ Live. That, uh, that would be impractical. However, I do want to say there's a couple of shows that I want to tell you about that I think are very special. One happened recently. It was my 1,000th episode of Rich Roll. I thought that was a very, very good show. Not, not that all shows aren't, but it, it was a little bit deeper, you know, like more of a meaningful conversation. Mm -hmm. And a week from today, because, because certain people have to pre-record for a variety of reasons. The show is 99% live. I interviewed John Robbins yesterday. Please watch it a week from today and bring your Kleenex. Oh. No, but it's in a good way if you're vegan. He's so, it's all, I mean, he's so compassionate. And it's okay. like, he has such a life story. You know, people don't realize he didn't just walk away from the fortune of Baskin Robbins. He lost all his money to Bernie Madoff. Oh, yeah. So it's true. I only know a tiny sliver. So I will watch it for sure. Because it's really a story of hope and resiliency and, and like you, inclusion. Really, please watch that show because it was, I mean, I would have cried, but as the host, I, I really kind of had to do what I do as a host and not be crying because I have cried on two shows and it just, it's just it's kind of hard and crying and teching at the same time, you know? So, no, I... It, and, and anytime, anything like that, you let me know. I'll send it out to everybody whenever there's something special you want me to do. I just, sure. I love all the things that you do. And again, just thank you. Make sure you guys are following her everywhere. And yeah, come hang out with us again whenever we, as Chef AJ and I are doing it. You got something get you want me that, Get me that SOS free sauce book. I'm, I'm working right now. And okay, there's a bunch of recipes for the SOS salt, salt book. And I am currently working on the SOS um, ice cream. Nice. Oh, for the creamy. So that's going to come out first, probably, because I think I'm going to do the SOS book as a Will paperback. You do that? Comment on the, come on the show, like on pre release or release day. That's where we sell a lot of stuff on. We'll be talking, and if you want to put in an ice cream recipe that you want me to put in the creamy book, you I might have one. Who knows? We can talk oh, about that too. Obviously, yeah, we need to chat. All right. Well, we can stay on forever, but it's not fair to the people. I know. Be so devious. Now, they, well, see, they also like it too when we. Um, uh, Lydia says John Robbins is amazing. Looking forward to the show. Oh, I like this. And Gina says, thank you both. Kathy, your catch line should be magical and delicious. Oh. And Chef AG, you gave me the best quote for one of my books. Oh, yeah, with something about Harry Potter wizard or kitchen wizard. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. yeah, and so that always just makes my heart just like grow like the Grinches. <laughs> so, okay, well, we're going to go. Um, Chef AG, do you have any parting words? Well, regardless of what you eat or don't eat, also eat your damn vegetables, Cheryl and everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl's laughing. And you know what? She's been asking for greens. She's been eating a lot of greens and stuff lately. Greens will change your life. I'm not kidding. If you are looking for beautiful skin, if you're looking for fighting cravings for sure, greens are really magical. Find ways to eat them, regardless of whatever else you're eating. Include greens in your life will change. I agree. I think that's a good note to end on. So eat your greens. I'm good. Tomorrow I'll be unboxing my CSA. So we'll see whatever beautiful greens that um, the farm is sending me. And we will see you then. And then um, probably a whole bunch more next week. I'm doing, I'm not doing as many videos as Chef AJ, but I'm doing more than usual. Okay. So everybody have a great Friday night. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you.